the queen is dead. By Meep the Changeling. Chapter 14 Azure Oyster Cult Dusk, 26th of Megan 15 EOH, Evening 40,000 men and women every day. Minimum. That's a workload, even if you do happen to exist in three temporal dimensions. The actual work still needs to be done at some point in your time space which corresponds with the next point in their timeline. It's really rather easy to explain how I get it all done. A mortal exists from one point to the next moving a single direction along a single temporal dimension. If they drop a cup the next event they experience is that cup falling. My kind exists in three temporal dimensions, free to move forward and back, left and right, even up and down, in time. Exactly what that actually allows us to do is very hard to explain to people who can't do it. Suffice to say if I dropped a cup, I could step left and it falls one way, or right and it falls another, step back and try to not drop the cup, in theory, or step forward and see the cup hit the ground next. As for up and down, well that's not really something a one-dimensional entity is capable of comprehending, even in their own small way. That's not to say that I'm completely beyond mortal understanding, I am able to move freely in time and possibility, but I cannot change my own timeline. Once something has happened, it is a fact. The fantasy of going back and changing something you yourself experienced is an impossibility, at least it is for us. Oddly enough mortals can do this while we can't, but I digress. Suffice to say that every day a staggering number of people die and I process them all. One at a time, at the same time, the moment after they have passed on. To me however it's not the same moment in time, I go from one to the next as a mortal wound, but in the overall timeline everything occurs simultaneously. While it may take me four days of mortal time to process everyone who died on a single day, they all move on at the same point in time. A consequence of this for me is that I can be pretty far out of the loop, backlogged with souls to guide and judge, and sometimes, I miss events I am trying to keep track of. See, things I am trying to keep track of become a part of my timeline. Meaning they happen in sequence with me. My time-moving abilities will not help me simply undo a mistake or oversight I have made. Which is why when the next soul on my list was a changelings I panicked. I was tracking Jade, if she had been killed while I was doing my Joe. Oh. No, this wasn't Jade. I made a mental luck to thank Auntie Chance for that later. This soul was much older and darker, tainted by a lifetime of cruelty and malevolence. One of Chrysalis's swarm, as revealed by the stray sparks of memories bleeding off her. The swarm, yet another thing I keep tabs on. For good reason. How had this fragment of evil died? With luck some pony had decided to attack them preemptively and... Oh, David punched the ever-loving shit out of. I quickly constructed an avatar, in order to nearly have a heart attack. It seemed the only way to appropriately deal with the utter panic at the thought of David and Jade encountering the swarm too soon. I ran up to the deceased changeling as it hovered in the nothingness, opened the way to the afterlife karmically appropriate, pointed towards the door, and blurted, Hey you're dead, afterlife's that way. It's an eternity of whatever you wrought in life, have to go by. A quick jump to the left, and a step to the right brought me to the mortal plane. A quick thought and Jade's soul shone like a beacon, guiding me right to a small storefront in Capson. There Jade and David fought against two changelings, one a sapphire hive zealot, the other a topaz hive conscript. Spell bolts flew, blades slashed, and apparently knuckle dusters had already done their skull cracking. I breathed a sigh of relief, this was nothing those two couldn't handle. My fears of the entire swarm having suddenly blotted out the sun were all for naught. Though there was one danger. Outside the storefront a quartet of guards were rapidly approaching, there to put an end to the fight. I recognized their leader, Axe Guard, a burly earth pony who had sent enough people to me that I would have a full 3% less paperwork to do once he kicked the bucket. He was brutal and violent, but simple, and just. Jade and David would be detained, but not harmed. Still, it would be best to stick around and make sure that they were in and out of jail as quickly as possible. 
a few small string poles would let me speed them on their way. I moved to the alleyway beside the storefront and let myself manifest completely. There would be a nice bar nearby, the perfect place to find a loose thread to pick it. As a, 26th of Megan 15 EOH, evening. It's hard to find yourself in a lower place than to be told to stay put when your friend is in danger. David and I had barely finished proving to the guards that he wasn't a danger and gotten a short way down the street, when he jerked to attention, grabbed a small box, and bolted off. I'd followed him for a few steps, asked what was wrong. Jade's in danger. Stay here. Five words, five hammer blows. Delivered in the manner of an angry father to their idiot kid. Had I bucked up that bad? I mean, I knew that I had, but, enough to destroy all trust completely? I guess I had. My first shot a real friend's in, maybe ever. My parents had been too strict, they drove off anyone who might have been friends with me, except for the few ponies who wanted to use my talent. My peers in college? Don't make me laugh. Every pony just wanted to copy my work. The Applewood Guard and citizens? I doubt any one of them would ever do more than business with an outlander. Jade and David had been my only shot. The traveling, the stories, the jokes, and teasing. All of that thrown away on a stupid impulse buy. My friend in danger, but my help not wanted. When was I ever wanted? Only when someone needed my services. Only when I could be useful. Never just for her fun. Never for me. I turned to look at the cart, he had some really effective weapons in there. Like those bombs. I could just end this, one pull of a string, and no pain ever again. That sounded great, actually. I moved around to the back of the wagon and started to dig. I'd seen him use one before. Small wooden pine box, four hooves wide one hoof thick. Ah, there we go. I picked one of the bombs up with my magic and set it on the ground, started to unravel the string and then suddenly some pony put a hoof on my shoulder. Hey, don't do that. What's wrong? A mare's voice asked. I turned to see a mare who was basically an albino giving me a super concerned look. It was a look that actually made me feel like someone gave a crap about me. Enough to make me decide to talk to her at least. Even if those jet black eyes were creepy as an abandoned convenience store in the fog. I. There's no point. I can't make friends, or if I do I fuck up and lose them, I sniffled, feeling even worse for feeling bad. Life just, bucking. The mare nodded and sat down next to me with a long frustrated sigh, yeah my brother's a pretty big asshole at, I mean, I'm sorry kid. You shouldn't blow yourself up though. But what's the point? I demanded morosely. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. The mayor said insistently, I totally get wanting to check out of life. By all means, go ahead, but blowing yourself up? A nice mayor like you should know that will hurt like hell and could leave you alive but minus major sections of your body. I blinked in surprise. I really hadn't wanted a lecture about hurting other people but... Wasn't that the thing ponies did in these moments? Uh, aren't people supposed to be mad when you try to? She nodded, yeah, but they fear death. Which is dumb. You don't fear the end of a book do you? Hey no, you can only appreciate a story once it's done. The only thing which sucks is when a story's too short, or has a crappy ending. That made a surprising amount of sense, I guess. But. After you die you don't do anything ever again. I can see why that would be something to be afraid of. Even if it sounds nice right now. She smiled and shook her head a little. There's plenty after you die. Trust me. Seasons don't fear the reaper, nor do the wind, the sun, or the rain. You can be like they are or you can live your days fearing the once certainty of life, it will end. But. What does that do to make life any better? All I want is a friend, or a cold friend. But no. Twenty-eight years of trying and nothing. No one cares about me. I muttered. 
She laughed and shook her head, no, it doesn't. Not directly. You have to appreciate life before an acceptance of your mortality will help you enjoy it. You know what your problem is? You're too hung up on that one part of life. Hey. I turned and looked up from the cobblestones, ears perking curiously, what do you mean? She stood up and pointed out into the street where a few ponies were walking by, looking at the two of us curiously or walking off, minding their own business. There are a million things you can see with your own eyes right now. Sure friends are great, but you know what's also great? A good bottle of beer, a nice smoke, and something fun to read on a quiet afternoon. Seeing something created by your own two hooves. Or if you're a romantic, the glow of a distant fusion reaction as it becomes visible over the horizon of a planet. So, you're saying. I'm saying that you shouldn't just kill yourself because one part of your life is crappy. Find something else to enjoy, and if there's truly nothing for you in life, well. Don't let people's opinion on what's right or wrong force you to be truly miserable for the rest of your days. Whether that means giving life a raspberry and going your own way, or seeking out death, that's your choice as a sapient being. She finished. I mulled over her words for a few minutes. They made sense. It would have been stupid to just kill myself like that. I still liked magic and cocoa and pretty things. Even if they did get me into trouble sometimes. It was like a light had suddenly turned on in my head. Yeah. I was really lonely, and pretty hurt, but there were still lots of good things there for me. You're right. What the buck was I thinking? I demanded loudly, looking at the sky in the hopes of an answer from. Well, nature I guess. Easy, the mare quipped, you were thinking with your brainy bits flooded with hostile spellcraft. I wait, what? I exclaimed, eyes widening. Yet. Yeah. Slowed speech, misdilated eyes, obvious meat hooks in the soul. Someone hypnotized you, and it looks like they wanted you dead after doing whatever they got you to do. Don't sweat it, I fixed it. You're fine now. She gave me a light smile, showing teeth brighter than anything else on her body. I. Oh. Then, I didn't fuck up. She was right, it was a con, a good con. I face hooved, the mare with the weird eyes. Faust's blood I didn't think anything was magic because she didn't have a horn. Hat. Yeah you shouldn't discount magic just because somebody's not a unicorn the pale earth pony said with a small grin as a lighter and cigarette floated out of her mane in a nearly invisible, ghostly, white aura. I blinked twice as she lit the cigarette and put the lighter back. But you, how? Surely you've seen non-ponies do magic. She commented taking a short puff, and a pony can learn a little bit. Unicorns are just better in general, plus for you having deep emotional connections and friendships increases the size of your mana reserves. Friendship is literally magic for you. Right. I had forgotten that. Though one thing was bugging me, you know, those are really bad for you. Right. I asked pointing a hoof at her cigarette. I know you have that whole don't fear death thing, but those will kill you. She giggled and gave me a grin that was way too pleased with itself. Ha. Huh. Oh my god I never get tired of that one. Irony, why are you so funny? I gave her a confused look of confusion. That's the only way I could possible describe what my face did thanks to her statement. Ha. <laughs> Anyways, she said after a moment of awkward silence about that friend's thing. I need to stay in town for business for a while. It's been a while since I got to go to a pub with a girl and chat about I don't know, guys, or whatever. What do you say? I blushed deeply. Seriously, why does every pony mistake me for a mare? I know I'm cute, and pretty, but something about me other than my junk has to say cold right? I, ah, uh, actually should watch this cart. Thank you though. Oh, but um. I'm not a mare, I'm a colt. The pale mare blinked three times and stared at me closely then shook her head. Bullshit. A half second later she flinched, oh. 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. Trans stallion, right. Sore. No, I'm a guy. Like, a cisgender guy. I groaned holding a hoof to my face. She raised an eyebrow and then shook her head again, sorry but no, you smell like a mare, look like a mare, sound like. Why the buck is flashing people the only way to prove my gender. I sighed and turned around, lifting my tail briefly enough to prove my point, and turned back around to the prefect face to capture total bafflement. I what, but? Um, okay, she sputtered. A heartbeat later she shook her head violently, even your soul looks female. You're a trans mare, right? No I groaned. I'm a colt. I like dresses and pretty things, sure, but I'm not a girl, nor do I feel like a girl. K, she said gently, face still frozen at completely confused. Wait a minute did she just say that my soul looked female? As in she could see it. What? I'm going to go drink now, and contemplate metaphysical anomalies in regards to mortals' genders, the mayor announced, quickly trotting off to a pub down the street. I sighed and shook my head. Bucket. I should just pretend to be a mayor from now on. Less complicated, and apparently less damaging to others' psyches. Always liked the name Lily better anyways. I put the bomb carefully back into the cart repacked everything the way it had been and sat down in front of the cart between the handrails. Jade and David would be back soon, and I could do my best to earn their friendship back once they arrived. I'd start with making sure nothing happened to the cart.